Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. This weekend is a holiday weekend and I thought we would continue our Milky Way tour. I have two consecutive nights of clear skies and I've decided to get a photo of the Lagoon Nebula. I've only shot the Lagoon once and it was only an HA and that was back in 2021. Last year I lost most of my summer to cloud so I didn't get a chance to even start another project or continue the one I had in 2021. So tonight we are definitely going to get it. However, when I was looking through Stellarium and comparing field of views, it just so happens that my 294 and Z73 was the perfect pairing for how I needed to frame up the Lagoon Nebula. So we're going to dust off the old Z73. This is actually my favorite telescope. And since I've gotten my C6, well, I haven't really had a chance to shoot through my Z73. And that's because I was trying to master collimation. I've gotten much better. And also just shooting through Hyperstar. Not only was I learning how to collimate, you know, a C6 on its own, but I was learning how to collimate Hyperstar on its own too. So that was kind of a lot to learn in one year, but I think uh, I'll need a break from that, and tonight's going to be a nice night with the Z73. So we're going to have to rebuild my kit. I, I did do a few modifications to it, so I returned it back to stock. Uh, if you've been with my channel for a while, you'd know that I installed an EAF, which I later donated to my C6. So I'm going to be focusing manually tonight. There's something so satisfying with you know, focusing with a Batnoff mask for some reason. I really enjoy it. I, I don't really know why, but like I said, it's just one of those things that I enjoy as I'm shooting astrophotography. Uh, I think I'm going to be using a filter wheel though, and also instead of an OAG like I normally use on this, I'll be using the Espivoni 50 millimeter guide scope because it just works so well on my C6, so why not? use it on my Z73. Well guys, uh, we are a few hours away from dusk. Let's get on out there. Hey guys, once again, beautiful night. I got down here a little early because these clouds are gonna move in at about 1.30. And as you see, the transparency isn't that great, but I'm down here anyways, because I've shot through worse. Uh, so we're gonna get the Lagoon Nebula tonight. And it is July 3rd, so if you're hearing fireworks, that's what's going on. People are lighting fireworks off. So if it gets clear enough, uh, I did bring my wide angle lens uh, and my full frame mirrorless. So maybe I'll try and get some Milky Way action. But I'm going to set up right now and um, get started. It was really easy to set this thing up because I didn't have to deal with collimation. All I had to do was just basically put my refractor on there and focus it. I'm even focusing manually and I'm having a really good time with it. Um, Batnoff mask style, right? Haven't done that for a long time. And honestly, I haven't touched this refractor since I got my C6 and Hyperstar. It, I just love it, you know, I forget how simple and awesome it is to shoot through a refractor. And um, the Z73 is an amazing telescope. It's only a doublet, but because I'm shooting in monochrome and I have to focus uh, with every filter, I get around a lot of the uh, things that make doublets not so great in one-shot color. So, I'm expecting some really good photos of the Lagoon Nebula tonight, and my subs are coming in and they're looking pretty good, despite all the, uh, it's smoke basically is what's in the air right now, despite all the smoke that I'm shooting through. So I'm getting a lot of detail in HA, and I'm gonna shoot some O3 next, and then S2, and I'll have probably two hours of data from tonight, so I'm really excited. Hopefully it clears up a little bit more because I can kind of see the Milky Way arch, but because of the 
smoke, it's got this kind of haze up there and it's not so great in wide, wide angle. So hopefully it clears up. Jeez, check this out guys. The moon's up right now. It's 99% illuminated. And you can kind of see the transparency because the moon's out. Wow, those are fireworks right now. I don't know if you, my mics picked that up. Stuff's exploding out here. But you can kind of see the transparency. It's not bad. It's not great either. But I'm getting some really good quality data, so I can't really complain. I'm on 03, right, my 03 subs right now. I'll uh, be taking that for an hour and then I'll get an hour in S2 and I should be done for the night. Right guys, before I finish our project, let's talk a little bit about the Z73, because it's been a while. The Z73 at the time of this recording is $730. Also, do yourself a favor, when you, if you are interested in purchasing this, make sure that you get the at least the flattener. The flattener will run you about $230, and there's also a reducer available for it that is around $200. They'll work, they are <laughs> well worth the price and it'll give you a lot of mounting options for different size cameras. So this will take up to a full frame camera, which is great. The scope itself is f5.9 and has a focal length of 430 millimeters. It's got some pretty high quality glass built into it as well, FPL 53, which gives it some really good correctional properties as well has a built-in Batnoff mask so that will help you focus on the stars at night. Has a two-speed rack and pinion focuser. So the small knob here will help you with those fine movements while the larger one, of course, will help you with those larger movements of focus. Has a built-in rotator as well. So you're able to frame up your target however you like, and it comes pretty complete. So starting from the top down, you'll see it has a, a handlebar up here, which is great for mounting guide scopes to. It's got all your telescope rings, your dovetail mount, and also it's got this little cap here for your focuser. A lot of attention to detail. Speaking of detail, it also has a little bit of a thermometer here, which I've never used before. But that's the Z73 in a nutshell. But uh, it is a fantastic first refractor. And honestly, in the hands of someone with experience, this refractor is super sharp. So I hope to show that to you by the end of this video. But honestly, tonight, I'm gonna take the night off because I'm gonna watch some fireworks with some friends because it's July 4th, and I'm very confident that I'll be able to finish this project by tomorrow night because I have one more clear night ahead of me. Check it out, Saturday night. It's supposed to be clear by the time I start shooting at 11. These are only clouds that are up right now, and hopefully we will finish our project on the lagoon. Oh, just waiting. Till it's dark enough to pull her a line and uh, probably be out here for, I don't know, maybe two hours, I think, tonight. Got some things to do in the morning and uh, trying to keep that astro and then life balance, you know what I'm saying? Because that's important too. Well, anyways, let me get set up and get going. We are now rolling and on target. Man, the transparency is so much better than uh, the previous night. Uh, check this out. It's, I mean, you can definitely tell I'm getting more faint dust and gas in the area that I wasn't getting before. 
shooting through all the smoke. So this integration is going to be really, really nice. I mean, I dig it already. I mean, this HA is so clear right now. Oh, it's going to be good tonight, hopefully. <laughs> I'm just worried about uh, clouds popping in and out. looks like where I'm shooting, I've got a few clouds popping in and out. But, you know, we'll make do. It's a nice night. Maybe I'll get a shot of the Milky Way. I don't know. It's I can see it. Uh, the moon's about to rise at midnight, so maybe I should try for it. You know what I mean? I'm on my O3 subs right now, and I actually got quite a few pics of the Milky Way tonight. It's uh, just past midnight, and the moon isn't up yet. I got the core. And then also the Milky Way just over the treetops. Different part of the Milky Way than I got last time, which is super cool. Anyways, I'm going to wrap this up after my sulfur subs. It'll probably be around 2 o'clock. But since I have probably about 5 to 6 hours of exposure on this target, I'm really excited to stack it and see what you know becomes of it. Totally fell asleep again. <laughs> when I woke up, check this out. That's the moon. Just came up. And it's just in time. So I'm taking my last uh, set of flats. And it's going to be time to go home after that. So. Guess I'll see you guys in the morning. It was a good night. Good morning, or should I say, good afternoon. Hey guys, I just wanna let you guys know I did stack my data this morning and I'm ready for this reveal. I also wanna let you guys know that I messed up on the acquisition of this data as well, but we'll get into that here in just a few. As a review, I shot with my Xenostar Z73 April Refractor and also my ASI 294mm Pro shooting at 47 megapixels. I shot at 47 megapixels because I have the intention of cropping in to the lagoon and uh, making some photos of all that detail that is sitting within the lagoon nebula. So let's take a look at it. All right, here is my framing with NGC 6559. As you see, I'm getting a lot of the outer nebulosity and it looks like I'm starting to expose a lot of the dark nebula that's near these two nebulas. Also the there's all these kind of knots inside of the lagoon as well that are well defined and I really like my choice of making the center of the lagoon kind of this magenta color. I think it really sets it off a little bit and gives it a lot of contrast. Now in between the two nebulas, there's this kind of dust bowl looking thing, which I can't wait to get more signal on because I think it looks really, really cool. All right, here's where it starts getting into the weeds a little bit. Of course, I just isolated M8 and it's looking really, really cool. The narrow band stars are kind of this amber color, which I totally dig. Uh, this can be done just standard HSO and that's kind of why I favor HSO because I like these amber colored stars. It just kind of looks like, you know, those ambers that you would get out of a fireplace or campfire. That's what it reminds me of. But you're seeing a lot of detail in the core of the lagoon and it's a pretty dramatic frame, right? I dig it. But here I think I was sensing something was a little off and it wasn't until this crop right here where I noticed that my stars don't actually look right. Now this is a cool photo too. I do dig this crop in as well and it my stars problems weren't as pronounced until my final crop where I just cropped in on the center of the nebula, hoping to expose the color 
and also the contrast in between everything else. Now, if you look at my stars, this is what it looks like on a Zenith star where your back focus is off. And I was like, there is no way that my back focus is off on this refractor. But it is, I mean, when I think back, I basically just put it together and I really didn't check, right? I just took for granted that it's a refractor, that my stars are just gonna look round and I don't really need to do anything but set it and forget it. Now that only works if you include all the spacer rings to make up the proper back focus. And I forgot the most important spacer ring of all my 11 millimeter spacer ring. This 11 millimeter spacer ring never goes away. Uh, this is going to be in every single configuration for whatever the reason was, I left it out when I um, rebuilt my <laughs> Z73 setup and I got stars that were completely off like this. And in the edges, actually, if you wanna check out the edges here, Oh, it's looking terrible, actually. Especially near NGC 6559. Look, they look like big footballs. So I messed up, but I don't really feel too bad about it. I actually had a really good time when I was out there and I could fix this for sure, right? I could fix the stars in this photograph really easy, but I'm not gonna. I'm gonna wait till next year. I'm gonna get some really good data on it. I'm gonna combine it with this one and I'm gonna use the stars from next year's data to make this photo right. So I still got some usable signal and I really like the photo anyways. So I think this is a win situation for me even though my stars were a little weird. But what I did learn was when I am switching gear, especially after a year of not touching it, I need to actually check that I have the proper spacing and everything else that goes along with this refractor. So just know that there's going to be redemption coming up because I have a few projects coming up that require the use of my Z73 and also the use of my Z61. And I'm really excited about those because it's been quite some time since I've shot through these refractors and apparently I need to shoot through them more. But you know, hey, we still have a few more targets in the core of the Milky Way. We're still gonna be taking our tour. So I guess I'll see y'all in the next one. Peace.